So I have already informed them in the WhatsApp group, but should you have another WhatsApp group that does not include me or any of the lecturers, perhaps you can, you know, remind your friends to join. I think, um, okay, uh, because this is still a class, yeah? Okay, and the attendance is only um, half of the class, yeah? So hopefully that they can join. I have already informed about this since yesterday. So hopefully they can join, yeah? So please. All right. Okay. All right, uh, Sulaiman, you may want to uh, off your mic for a moment. All right, thank you. However, uh, throughout my, um, I mean, uh, when I explain on the topic, if you have a question, just shoot in the chat box. And later I will, uh, either once in a while, or, or I'll just finish uh, the lesson until the end, and I'll just go around with the questions that you have posted and try to, you know, or if you don't have questions or you want to ask or seek further clarification, you know, or you have things to ask about your assessment, uh, sorry, your follow-up activity and whatnot, do let me know, yeah? Okay. Okay, if you are unable to uh, see the, um, you know, um, uh, the, the slide, do let me know, yeah? Okay, so this week we'll be looking at animation. I think last week, uh, I hope that you have gone through, you know, um, my lecture on video and sound. So basically, animation is part of the... Um, video and sound as well, where you, you know, um, uh, we have animations uh, or we include animation in our so-called video, yeah? All right. Okay. Um, this is the outline. All right. I'm not going to read one by one. Let us look at the introduction of animations, yeah? Now, a simulation of movement created by displaying a series of pictures or frames. Okay, so entertainment, multimedia titles in general and children's titles specifically, they rely heavily on animation. So when we talk about animation, I think most of us know that animated video uh, works best for kids or children, even school children, um, even teens, you know, teenagers and so on. However, we must also be reminded that sometimes, you know, adults also prefer or may have tendency towards uh, animation. So um, it is best to include all the elements when you are designing your website because um, that helps you to uh, transfer or to disseminate information effectively. So not necessarily that because sometimes when you use animation throughout, then it will bore some of these uh, adults down here. Yeah? But uh, when your website is off animation, that means there's no animation in it, then sometimes it can be quite dull and dry. So you need to be, um, you need to work together with your friends uh, in order for you to, uh, just, just hold on, yeah. Okay, when you work together with your group members, you may need to, you know, discuss together uh, and decide um, on which part in the so-called website that you may want to include animation, on which part that you may want to use a video, or on which part that, that you may just want to stick with, uh, you know, um, um, uh, images or maybe narrations, so on and so forth, yeah? So animations are useful in multimedia in the areas of entertainment, education, and training. In fact, I guess uh, there was this one study that I read before 
even for training purposes, uh, most of the uh, training agencies or companies that provide trainings, they prefer to use animation as their attention getter or attention grabber to their audience or their, you know, uh, so-called trainees, you know. So, um, you may also want to look in 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 a sense of a research you know maybe some people may have conducted recent research on what is uh, the best element to be included also later when i explain about your project assess uh, your project or web design project you will realize you may also need to conduct a small scale uh, what I call this a small-scale research or needs of analysis. Sometimes you may want to ask your audience or your potential audience or your potential viewers of your website what they really need to know or what they really want to be included in the website. And also to ask the same question to the uh, to the owners of the website since you are the developers so you don't own the website you're doing a favor to a person or you're doing a, a work or a, a job to a, to, to a group of people or to a person so you may also want to ask that that group of people sometimes if a website belongs to a company uh, certain companies, they prefer to hear the says of their employees or people of that company, what they think to be included in the website. So this is when you need to include a small scale study. I call it needs of analysis study for you to get more information what to be included. Uh, and, and, and not necessarily that you have to use everything that is given by these people. So a good website is, uh, I mean... Uh, in, in a sense of uh, um, saying this, yeah, a good website is developed based on what is needed by the um, uh, the owners of the website, together with what you think as developers, what you think that best fit for the website. So it's a combination of both. You cannot necessarily, you cannot always listen to what they want because, you know, they can just simply say what they want, but not necessarily that is basically the best thing to do or the best thing to display on a website because you, as the experts, you also have your, you know, um, you, you have with you your knowledge and experience uh, based on also some readings that you have done. You know what is the best for, for a website. So we need to integrate of these two, yeah? Uh, bear that in mind when you are designing a website. So uh, coming back to animation, they can be used to create simplified illustrations of a simulation or dramatization. They can be much easier to understand because they are less complex than video, all right? So it allows for real world to process, uh, sorry, processes to be modeled. Um, and reaching graphical representations, attracting attention, visual interest. You know, some videos, uh, the images that you put in the videos can be static. So that is why when people, um, although it's a video, but because of the images are static, uh, that means they, they are at one point and they don't move. Sometimes some people, you know, uh, this is where animation comes in handy. So when you have animation to replace this aesthetic um, images, it helps people to understand better. And also, um, you know, just now earlier, I mentioned, I'm um, sorry, just everyone in a while I have to accept. So that is why it is very, very important for you to join on time so that I won't be having to be, you know, to accept this all right i hope kalau ada pun lepas ni just have to wait yeah because this thing is recorded so okay coming back to this one uh earlier just now i mentioned that um you know certain companies although this is you know the use of animation is actually good to gain the attention of the um website readers yeah um or viewers um, you know, in a, it's like a, an introduct in your introduction. You put something like a like a form of animation so that when people watch, oh, this is interesting, this is nice. So you have gained their attention. And on top of that, animation can also be used to retain their attention. First to get, and next to retain. 
All right. So sometimes when you want to explain on something, so when you have uh, moving animations or moving images, you know, um, in the form of anime uh, characters. Uh, you know, um, so on and so forth. It it makes people to understand better. It's like watching a cartoon, for example. Yeah. All right. And nowadays, you know, um, even if you go to certain certain length, you will notice that animations has gone beyond than just having like a cartoon strip. You can even have uh, cartoons that look like you know normal human beings, like human like cartoon. You know, I think a lot of cartoons, but of course, um, that one itself requires like a program for you to join. For the purpose of this um, designing a website, your knowledge is not to actually learn on how to create animation from scratch, because that this is not part of uh, part of the syllabus where you need to create cartoons or animation from scratch using, you know, uh, basic platforms, yeah? But uh, what you'll be learning is uh, more on how to actually utilize available uh, online tools that can actually assist you to come up with animated video. Uh, I think by now, you should be already familiar with uh, websites like Powtoon, and then um, uh, there's another one, uh, animations or something, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm pretty sure there's a lot of websites available online as well as uh, mobile apps that can actually assist you. And I may want to also remind you that this website, sometimes when you want to use, uh, you may need to uh, create an account. And sometimes they will just give you uh, the trial version, you know. Um, when you create a video, uh, if I'm not mistaken, for Powtoon, you'll be given to, with limited characters. And also, there will be watermark and the duration of the video will not be really that long, yeah. Uh, the, uh, the other one is uh, animated something something um, you can create but you are unable to download the video so there are few restrictions yeah and undeniably yes that is the how should I say yeah? um, the uh, the downside of this um, uh, available uh, uh, ready-made template uh, uh, animated websites yeah or tools so um, there are also some other ways that you can actually uh, explore in order for you to create animated video uh, for free. Uh, later, I'll share with you um, uh, a video uh, done by this person who actually created an anim animated video using PowerPoint. Surprisingly, we can actually use PowerPoint in order for us to create an animated um, um, a video. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned to you just now, attracting attention and visual interest. So there are two types, 2D animation, 3D animation. Okay, so 2D animations, two-dimensional 2D animation software adds movement and action to static images. So these programs use either vector drawn or bitmap images as objects. The, uh, the motion of animation is perceived by the viewer from a series of frames, okay? And then from the motion to appear smooth, a minimum of 15 frames per second uh, is generally required. So 2D animation methods like cell animation, path animation. Now, this is just general knowledge. As you know, we don't have final exams. You will not be tested on the theoretical part of this. This is just for you to understand. But even up until now, if you don't understand, pun, it's okay. Because when we assess your final projects, we don't see whether or not you use 2D or 3D. No. What we see is whether you include animations in your web design ataupun tak. Itu sahaja. If you have included uh, animated, we'll just look at the purpose of this animated video or this animation, whether it is effective, whether it is developed well, so on and so forth. Yeah. And uh, cell animation is based on a series of frames or cells in which the object is redrawn in each consecutive cell to depict motion. And then cell comes from the word celluloid. 
a transparent sheet material which was first used to draw the images and place them on a stationary background i guess you know uh, since the uh, the invention of animation or the emergence of animation in 40s 30s when they started to create cartoons you know they used this kind of method in order for them to create the movement you know so basically this is cell animation Puff animation based uh, sorry, is the simplest form of animation and the easiest to learn. It moves an object along a prede predetermined path on the screen. The path could be a straight line or it could include an, any number of curves. So often the object uh, does not change, although it might be resized or reshaped. Okay, like uh, the ball, yeah, you know, from one point to another. All right. Okay, and yes, you can even use this on PowerPoint where you can actually move um, an item or an image and as it gets to another point, the item becomes bigger, larger or smaller. Yes, you can utilize the animation panel that is available on Power PowerPoint. But the one that I'll be sharing you later is just something that is simple and sometimes, you know, um, um, when when I share this, you know, with even with my colleagues, the reason why we use PowerPoint slide or PowerPoint, uh, Microsoft PowerPoint to create animated video, because number one, you are very uh, familiar with the techniques, with all the buttons available in PowerPoint. So it'll be much easier for you to adapt and to learn. You know, whenever you watch uh, tutorial videos, it's it'll be easier because you already know where to go, where to, to, to find the animation tabs, so on and so forth. So, and also, since they have the ability to produce animated video and you are familiar with it, those this, this combo is basically good in order for you to come up with a good animated video. So that is why the focus of today's lesson later, I'll be sharing with you on how to use PowerPoint for you to create your... But then again, I... I'm not going to, to to make it this too rigid to a point that you have to use PowerPoint slide, not necessarily. And I'm pretty sure that you are also familiar with other uh, Web 2.0 tools uh, or online tools that are available to create animated videos. And you are free to use them. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not going to restrict your creativity and also your um, resources. So you can actually outsource or you can actually uh, not outsource. You can actually go beyond than using PowerPoint in order for you to create your animated videos. Yeah. But all I'm seeing here is why it is um, because given the, the circumstance now with the Internet connection issue, with the laptop issue, so on and so forth, I guess Yes, um, using PowerPoint is the best or perhaps the, the best alternative to create uh, also in creating animated video, yeah? Okay, so let's just skip. So come, we come back to this, yeah? Path animation. So 3D animation, creating 3D animation is considerably more complex than 2D, of course. It involves two steps, mod modeling and rendering. Okay, so modeling is the process of developing a mathematical wireframe representation of any three-dimensional object. The product is called a 3D model, and models may be created automatically or annually. Okay, so this is the model. Rendering is the 3D computer graphics process of automatically converting 3D wireframe models into 2D image with 3D photorealistic effects on a computer yeah so rendering may take from seconds to days for a single image of frame all right okay so animation file formats can be in a form of gra graphic interchange format uh, i look up on how to pronounce the word gif yeah some of us um because there was an argument about this on uh, the Big Bang Theory, uh, you know, the TV series, the sitcom. So some, I, I mean, in some of the characters in the TV series argued whether to pronounce it as GIF or GIF. So they went around and asked. Some people say that because graphic is G, so we pronounce it as GIF. But uh, a lot of people pronounce this as GIF, as J, you know. So when I look up on the dictionary, both pronunciations are accepted because this is a new temo terminology in um, uh, technology. We also have a flash FLA project file 
format and uh, even to use flash is interesting i've tried this before when i was at your age during my degree program instead of using powerpoint i uh, whenever we have uh, or i had uh, presentations i use flash and it's very interesting i once created this platform um, it's like a platform uh, i call it enchanted uh, jungle where you know uh, there'll be like stardust and butterflies coming out the moment you move your cursor and then something else will pop out and then that will be my presentation so the basic form is is an enchanted um forest or jungle but uh inside i can change so there was this one time i used this you know one semester because i learned this from my friend from a mass com uh, a mass com friend of mine he taught me how to use flash and it's very interesting but of course it requires a lot of works yeah you if you want to animation yes i have to admit it requires requires a lot of works these sometimes you don't sleep yeah that happens yeah so that is why when it comes to your web design it is a group work yeah and also um what best is to have everyone to work on the same thing but then again you know sometimes you just have to study smart as well and that is to assign uh um you know every multimedia element to the experts in the group so if let's say you have someone who is really good with animation then ask that person to do animation but not to say that you don't help this person of course you do maybe in finding materials or in in choosing the right graphics or in coming up with the storyline so on, so on and so forth yeah but uh, when it comes to doing the animation perhaps that person can do it and likewise you can also apply the same thing for other elements like images you know videos sound so on and so forth yeah so multi image network graphics mng flash of course okay note the diff friends between animation and video video takes continuous motion and breaks it up into discrete frames animation starts with independent pictures and puts them together to form the illusion of continuous motion so lab exercise you'll be creating a 1 minute animation yeah so this is the end of today's uh, lecture um before anything i just need to stop the recording yeah